Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm on the road again to find another incredible comic book collection. Is this the hottest comic book collection I've ever seen? It very well might be. So on the way there, I'm winding through these, these curvy roads, I mean single track roads. I'm like, where am I going? Well, I end up in this gentleman's house. I met this man at a local comic show a few weeks back, and he goes by the name of Bob Barker. I'm not making this up. So when I get to Bob Barker's house, I see the things he has, and I immediately am like, okay, this guy is a big Alex Ross guy. So what you're seeing here in the beginning is kind of his kitchen area. So I'm like setting up my gear. I've got my lights. I've got my uh, camera stand. You know, I'm, I'm strapped to the gills per usual. And I start like setting stuff up, and, and he, he starts telling me, he's like, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm going to start filming in here. And, and he says, well, there's more. And I was like, okay, well, this original, this, this stuff that he had down here in this kitchen, this is stuff that he was trying to sell, trying to move. There was a little bit of everything. And as you can see, there were several Alex Ross prints, including that uncle Sam Alex Ross print. He was actually telling me about this and this whole experience, uh, Really, I learned a lot. This was kind of like a learning experience. This gentleman has been collecting comics for over 30 years. And if you can see right here, this is a just a taste of what's to come, if, if you kind of catch my drift. Um, this man's been collecting for over 30 years. He's 46 years old. He's been collecting for longer than I've been alive. Um, he kind of got his start in like the 1989 Batman and then was heavy in it in the 90s. And as you'll see here in a bit, this, this guy's got probably one of the best collections of Kingdom Come memorabilia you'll ever see. So again, I'm just digging through this short box. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, you know, is there like a display room or is this, is the stuff just kind of strewn everywhere, like in his kitchen table? And I was kind of, um, not discouraged, but I was like, um, come on, is this it? And then stuff like this was just laying around. I was like, you know, Incredible Hulk 340, awesome Tom McFarlane cover. I was like, I mean, this is like a wall book for me, but it's just like on his kitchen table for him. So I was like, you know, what's going on here? So when we, we originally talked, he was wanting me to buy some of these, uh, these Hobby Lobby type, canvas art prints of these Alex Ross covers and and you can see him here Th this this Joker and Harley Quinn and and then this Captain America homage um, to Avengers 4 I mean these are incredible pieces but I just don't have the wall space so I wasn't I mean I was interested in them I'd love to hang them up but it just I don't you guys have seen my room my wall space is very limited he had like Captain America and Avengers helmets like replica helmets then he starts bringing out this pinup art. And when I'm talking about the hottest comic book collection, you, you will see here, he had a curio cabinet out in his living room of uh, these busts. And as I'm walking up to it, I'm like, okay, I'm noticing they're all like pretty, pretty ladies and sexy ladies. And I was like, okay, that's, that's kind of a cool thing. And then he starts like pulling out these pinup pictures of like Red Sonia and Vampirella and Lady Death. And I'm like, okay, what, what's going on here? Well, we mosey upstairs and then I start seeing these signed lithographs uh, by Alex Ross, Paul Dini, these Batman pieces. And I mean, they're beautiful frame pieces. I would love to have any of these. And then this was just like sitting in the hallway. So like Giant Size X-Men 1 6.5, Uncanny X-Men uh, 94, uh, 7.0 CGC graded and then this long box was the entire well not the entire run but the uncanny X-Men run from like the giant size X-Men in 94 through like 300 and something he was talking about um, he, he ended up buying this X-Men collection and I believe it had the entire Silver Age X-Men or, or most of the, the, the Silver Age X-Men run and he ended up selling that off and then he still had this, this uncanny run, you know, the Chris Claremont stuff. And he was wanting to sell that, you know, if I could have just like wound back time and gone back in time, I would have bought this from him because, you know, as you guys, if you guys watch the channel, I bought like a huge run of this, you know, had all the stuff, Days of Future Past, 
you know, first Kitty Pride, first Emma Frost, we saw that in there. You know, all all the, the big books, the first Gambit was in here. I would have bought this from him. But, uh, you know, lo and behold, I already had bought this from uh, a comic show in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. So I kind of missed the boat. But it's one of those things that's like a lesson in comic book collecting is patience. Opportunities will come if you just continue to talk to people, meet people, your opportunity will come. So as I'm paging through this, I'm like, you know, do you have like a display? And then he says, you know, he's like, wait, wait, check out this room right here. This is another Kingdom Come print. Like I said, this guy is like the biggest Kingdom Come fan ever. And Kingdom Come came out in 96, and it's in internal art by Alex Ross and, and the covers by Alex Ross, if you didn't know. It's, it's one of the best runs ever. And then this was his kind of like computer room. So, you know, when I'm, I'm, I'm looking and I'm doing these, these, video, these videos for these collections, I'm, I'm always trying to like think about how I'm going to frame it. You know, I want you guys to be able to see as much stuff as possible. And, and as you can see, it, it was a little cluttered, a little, uh, a lot going on in here. Um, a few things were displayed, but he had just kind of runs like stacked up against the wall. And then he had this bookshelf and there was some omnibus in there. A few omnibus that really kind of caught my eye. Some art books. And then there was just like long boxes stacked over in the corner. And then long boxes in the other corner. And, you know, you guys have seen my room. I, I have to have things tidy. This would... This would like fire all my OCD off if, if I was looking at this every day. But, you know, guys collect differently and especially guys like him who have so much stuff, you know, it's hard to keep to keep tabs on everything. Well, he starts showing me these things on this bookshelf and this guy is so nice. Like, I, I mean, he is just going out of his way to like show me all these different books. Um, and, and like I said, I mean, these are these are Alex Ross art books. Um, I, I was, I, I had no idea what some of this stuff was. Um, he had children's books and I believe, I believe this, this might have been one of the children's books. I think this was, yeah, this is what he was explaining to me. Uh, the difference between like a, like a technically a children's book and a comic book. Um, and, uh, it, it was just a real treat to see things like this and to talk to somebody who was a real collector and to talk to somebody who who really cared about what he had and really had a love and a passion for you know everything superheroes everything pop culture everything that you know we know and love it's just so different talking to a dealer somebody that's you know in it for the money in it for you know for the flip um, and talking to somebody like this it was it was very different so I start digging through these long boxes and I go over here. Um, this is to the left of his desk. You know, I start seeing like a lot of uh, lady covers, um, a lot of like super modern stuff, like stuff that has just been bought within the past couple years. I quickly start seeing this guy is like a connoisseur of like pretty lady covers. So I'm like seeing, you know, Lady Death, Red Sonia, Vampirella. J. Scott Campbell, Adam Hughes covers, you know, you name it. Artists that are pretty lady cover guys, they're they're in here. And I understand there is like a whole, you know, subset of the, the comic book community that collects this stuff. It it's not really for me. Like I said, I've got like I think I have like one pretty lady cover, and that's the Catwoman, uh, Adam Hughes number 52. And that, that's about it. Um, he had all the timeless variants, as you're seeing there. And, and those are beautiful. Those those slabbed would be incredible. Then he had that uh, Alex Ross, uh, Justice Society of America, the JSA run. Um, I'm assuming that was from the 90s. It may be from the 2000s. I can't remember. And there's a few nice keys in that. He said he apparently had, had built another run of that for another individual. Um, and I would love to have a run of that. So I wish he'd build a run for me. As I'm going through here, I'm a little bit discouraged. I'm like, you know, I, I, the way he was talking at the con, it was like, this guy had like major keys, big books. 
and I'm not seeing any of it. Um, and then he whips this out. This 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 kind of caught me off guard. This is like full nude girls and goddesses um, book, and I can't show all this. I'm like showing you like the PG-13 stuff, but I mean th th this was. And I asked him, I was like, do you have like a collection of like Playboys or something? He said he had a few, but uh, this guy definitely really appreciated this type of art and these type of covers. I was in there and I, I was honestly kind of like scared going in there in the beginning because it was like, am I going to be like, uh, you know, is he going to like put the lotion on the skin and like put me down in a well or like, am I going to end up in this guy's like refrigerator or something? Cause I had literally met this guy like one time, like it was at a comic, it was at a comic show like that I was selling at and I met him and then, you know, we started talking uh, on Facebook and then the next thing you know, I'm like going to this dude's house, like driving to go see him. So, you know, I was it's one of those things, it's very trusting on both ends where he's like letting me into his home, seeing his collection, and then, you know, uh, me going to his house. I mean, anything could happen. Another interesting thing about all this was his son was coming home uh, from school and uh, he he was uh, he saw that I was then there and he, he knew I was there to look at the comic books. His son could not care less about any of these comics, which kind of made me kind of sad because it was like, you know, his dad cared, cares so much about this, collects so much of this, and, you know, the son could give two craps about it. So um, that kind of sucked uh, because, you know, apparently he, he reads manga and he likes nerd stuff, you know, like most kids do. It's just the comics, you know, he could care, he could care less about the superhero stuff. So... I know a lot of guys have, a lot of uh, younger people have reached out to me after I made that video about young people don't care about your comic book collection. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of younger guys reached out and said, hey, you know, I, I collect. But man, it just more often than not, I'm seeing it repeatedly. Just kids do not care about the comic book collection. So I say, I'm getting ready to leave at this point. Like, w w there's no, you know, the, the, the good stuff is not here. Then he, he says, hey, there's another room. He's like, let me show you the bedroom. And I'm like, what's in the bedroom? He says, let me get in the closet here. And I walk in there, and you'll see it here in a minute, rows of long boxes. He starts pulling out these Ultra Pro or these, uh, yeah, the, the, these, the, the nice cases uh, from BCW, and I'm like, okay, here we go. And you can see all the slabs, all these high grade uh, key issues. This is just a taste of, of what's to come here. I start paging through here, I start getting excited. I'm like, oh my God. The whole time I'm like finding stuff that I'm liking, and I'm like, hey man, is this for sale? Is this for sale? Um, I end up buying a couple things, so stick around to the end to see what I bought. Um, but there were several things that he just was not willing to sell. Um, and it was just kind of funny because it was like just talking to him. He doesn't want to get out of the hobby, but you could tell he wants to downsize, which so many of us do, I think. But it's funny when it comes down to it and you got a guy coming through your collection and looking through things. And it's like, well, do you want to sell this? You want you want to get rid of this? No. You want to sell this? No. It's like, when it comes down to brass tacks, do you actually want to sell your stuff or not? It's just kind of funny. Then he had a like this huge run of Mr. Miracle. I've been looking for this book. All these DC keys are super, uh, you know, reasonably priced right now. Now's the time to be buying this DC stuff. As I was talking to him, just, you know, and, and he did most of the talking. Let's not mince words. I I could barely get a word in a lot of the time. This guy, like, is like a scholar of comic books. Like, when I make these videos, you know, I, I never admit to being like a, like a guru or a genius, like, of my knowledge. I, I mean, I'm making videos to entertain people. I, that is my goal. I want to make videos that I would like to watch and make videos that are entertaining. 
this guy is like talking to me about stuff about writers, about you know property rights, about Warner Brothers, about you know when this book was printed, how many printings, how you know I'm like it was like information overload. And when I go to these guys' collection houses and see these collections, this happens so frequently because a lot of these guys they don't get to share their passion. I have an outlet to share my passion. I get to talk on Sticky Goose Comics about funny books all the time. And this was a real treat to see this. This guy has a near complete, if not complete run of Barry Allen first appearance uh, forward into the Flash run. And he's got second appearance of Flash right here. This is the first appearance of Captain Cold, second appearance of Flash, these showcase books. This is third appearance of Flash. I don't know if he had first uh, first appearance of Barry Allen. It was like see, then it started. This starts getting into like the crazy stuff, and it's it's so funny. It was so funny to see the things he had like displayed or the things he had out as compared to the things that you know he had in his closet. And it's like you know if I had some of this stuff like these. You know these variant uh, Edge of Spider Verse two and multiple copies of Spider Verse two, and then the Umberto Ramos, you know, silk variant cover. I'm like, I would be displaying this stuff because it's like, I mean, this stuff is just too cool not to show. Then he had some Why the Last Man signed by Brian K. Vaughn himself in a green label. I love, I like seeing this where guys, you know, submit stuff that that you know they got signed and and they're like, you know what, I don't care if it's a green label. This is still signed. I know it's been signed. I don't care. I really appreciate that. It's like a true collector that does that. There were more short boxes. You know, he had uh, what was that first Kamala Khan. Then he had several of these uh, uh, these variant covers. And then there's more Flash. There's first uh, Mirror Man. Here's uh, and I kind of put the books down. I kind of reposition here. But there's first um, uh, Gorilla Grodd and uh, Pied Piper. I think I pulled that out here. Um, man, that is an awesome book in a 6.0. I mean, that is just a huge key. Um, more flash. And, and like I said, I'm not super knowledgeable of flash and I kind of like not kind of exposed my lack of knowledge, uh, for flash when I was talking to him. Um, and I kind of was like, why flash? He had this big story about you know how basically back in the day uh he there was like a 90s there was a 1990 um flash uh tv series this is a killing joke 9.8 that's a rare book you don't see that 9.8 first print very often but that uh aquaman number one that first uh you know that that 90s flash show kind of sparked his interest and then flash was super easy to collect um back then because very few people cared about it. That's a great uh, Catwoman and Silver Age Catwoman book. Um, and then obviously the Green Lantern, uh, Speedy Does Heroin book, you know, that's one of my favorite books ever. But just kind of listening to him, you know, how he pieced these, this run together. And that's so impressive to me, you know, the dedication to, to put a run like that together and his unwillingness to break up the run because I was like, you know, I was willing to pay for that uh, that first uh, Barry Allen meets Silver Age Flash. I pull out this first Sabretooth in a 9.2, uh, that Iron Fist book. I think it's like Iron Fist, I can't remember, 14 or something. I can't remember. But uh, I was like, I, I was interested in buying that. Um, he was not, he was hesitant to sell that. It was kind of a bummer. I ended up putting it back. You know, he had the Ultimate Fallout 4 and 9.0 and more of these Red Sonia Catwoman books. I, I don't know anything about these books. Some of those may be very rare, very expensive. You guys will have to let me know in the comments. I'm not knowledgeable of that. Then I come over here to this. And I'm like, are you kidding me, dude? Like, I mean, this collection just kept going and going. This was, um, this was like I said, in his bedroom. And, uh... All of this was like uh, 
organized by alphabetical order. I start pulling these these long boxes out. I'll kind of show you. I think I pull out a Batman. There's a couple long boxes of Batman here. Uh, a lot of that 90s Batman. Uh, you know, the Bane Breaks Batman's Back era, the, the, the Nightfall run. Great reading. You know, the books aren't worth much. There was first, uh, what's that, Damian Wayne or something. Uh, that book was like, hot has been hot here recently then there's more batman rebirth there's first punchline multiple copies of that reprint copies you know he he this guy this is the guy that the guys like this are what's keeping the comic book market afloat like he's the guy that's that's got the pull list that's going to the comic shop you know every week getting the hot book Speaking of which, the first Spider Boy was on his table in there, with uh, in his computer room, which was hilarious. I, I know I just made a video here recently about don't buy that comic book. He had it, of course he had it, because this guy buys the big books of the week. This guy is supporting the local comic shop, and then just like there was like a huge the Todd McFarlane um, Spider Man run, the ASM run, all in newsstands. Several of these books I need. He didn't want to break up the uh, that run, which I don't blame him. I just, it was like, I mean, this is like a true collector. This is just a guy who just keeps bringing out stuff. Just bringing out crazy, crazy nice books. Uh, that ASM 301, I really want that book. Um, there's another 300 in uh, a newsstand. It's like, God, man. You know, these are books that I would be displaying. <laughs> He's just got them stacked on on top of a long box. I think some of these books he was like preparing to have sent uh, out for cleaning and pressing. He's got a guy. I think it was out. He got a guy was out of Indiana or something. Um, you know, where he was sending books to get cleaned and pressed. I look in this other stack here and. And just, I'm like, okay, I thought I saw something under here. I thought it was something pretty good. And then, yeah, boom, this uh, Green Lantern book. And then, oh, no big deal. Hulk 180, Hulk 181 just under here. And then there's a 182 under there. These are all complete. Marvel value stamp. And if you can see, like, I mean, this is a clean copy. I'm like, instantly, are you selling this? And he said, yes. And I said, can I take it out of the bag? And he said, no. And I almost busted out laughing. Because it was like, this guy, <laughs> it was so fun. It was just like, I wanted to look at the book. He wouldn't let me take it out of the bag, which was hilarious. So I, uh, I, I was just like, okay, man. You know, when you get it back from being cleaned and pressed, uh, I would like to potentially buy that book and look at it. Uh, found out later on that book ended up having, I think, some, some water damage or something. Um, I don't know. Like I said, didn't get to see it out of the bag, so I may never know. So I'm finishing up here looking at these these top of these books, and stuff's kind of starting to wind down. I end up needing to leave. Uh, like I needed to be somewhere at 6.30. Uh, Bob just kept talking. Like, I mean, I was like, Bob, I'm, I'm going to have to go, you know, he's one of these guys. It's like, he, he'll talk your ear off. And I really appreciated, you know, him sharing so many stories with me, sharing uh, so much of his love and his passion for these books. It was just, it's such a treat, like I was saying, to meet, meet these guys, see these collections, especially guys that have collected so long, seen the highs and lows, seen you know, the, the crashes and the, the spikes and just stuck with it because these are the guys that are keeping the hobby alive. And these are the guys that, you know, they're true fans that, that you really appreciate. So I ended up buying a couple things. Let's get on back to the house and let's take a look at exactly what I picked up from our good friend, Bob Barker. All right, guys, so we are back in the Sticky Goose Man Cave, and this is the haul. Just ended up getting a couple things from our good friend Bob. This is Marvel Graphic Novel X-Men, number five. This is the first printing. There's multiple printings of this. This is God Loves, Man Kills. This is one of the best stories I've been told um, 
of the X-Men, specifically from that Chris Claremont run. A lot of different themes in this book, and this is a book I've been wanting for a while. If you guys have followed the channel, this is a book that I have um, taken a look at at multiple conventions. It's never been in the grade or the printing that I've wanted. This is a first print in a high grade. He ended up selling me this book for $30, and I was tickled to death. I mean, this is a book that I can't, I, I literally cannot wait to read this. Um, I think the the some of the movies, like the original X-Men movies, uh, were based on this storyline or kind of adopted a lot from it. And a lot of stories, a lot of stories from X-Men have been taken from this, this book, this run, um, well, from this graphic novel in the future. So super glad to have this in the collection and can't wait to read it. This is the Waltz, Walter Simonson Mighty Thor Omnibus. This book is out of print. Um, this is an omnibus I've really wanted for a while. I've heard that this is the definitive run of um, Thor. Like this is one of the best Thor runs. I've read the Jason Aaron um, Thor God of Thunder run, which is probably one of my favorite comic book runs I've ever read. This is apparently the other amazing Thor run that I have to read. When I saw it on his bookshelf, I, you know, it was, I was like, he's displaying this. He must love this book. And I was like, man, I, I really like that Mighty Thor book. Uh, you know, would you want to sell that? And he said, yeah, that, it's funny you mentioned that. I was actually wanting to sell that. I got this book for $60. This book is out of print. It's worth double that on eBay. It's got some significant wear there to the top of the dust jacket, which is unfortunate, but this is a book that I'll be reading. You know, it, it's awesome to have this in the collection, regardless. Uh, it's in very serviceable condition. The, the spine is in great shape. So I'm super glad to have this. I want to wrap this up by saying thank you um, to Mr. Barker for letting me into his home and letting me have the opportunity to see his collection. He, I also want to let you guys know if you want to reach out to him about purchasing things, and, and he's only interested in serious inquiries as far as the big things like maybe that X-Men run or things like that. I'm going to leave his email in the description of this video. So if you guys want to reach out to him, go ahead and do that. But again, only serious inquiries and, you know, um, with reasonable, reasonable offers. He's only going to be taking those. So um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. Take care.